Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to part two of my uh, build guide for the FF03 chassis um, from Tamiya. Um, this is how far we got last time. So we've got the differential built. It's in its case with all the gears. We've got the motor plates attached and the spur gear. Now, at, in uh, part one, I wasn't exactly sure on how to tension the um, the diff once it was built, but um, I had a nice comment uh, from Biker Bill, cheers Bill, uh, who pointed out that it does show us here in this diagram. It doesn't say, but um, if you look at the diagram, what we need to do is hold the output drives um, so they don't move with a, there's a wrench or you can use a ruler or something, and you tension that center bolt, your BA11, until the diff won't rotate anymore in the center with these two out drives being locked. So thanks very much for that. That is a how you tension um, the differential. So on with the build. Step six, which is attaching the front damper stay. I've pre-assembled some of this already. So you've got your main part here, um, which is the plastic part, K11. The first thing I've done is to get to these two metal parts, which it calls uh, BA28, a rocker nut. <laughs> anyway, they go as shown um, with two 8mm screws from underneath holding those two in place. Um, they're going to be the pivots for the rockers. Then I've put the two ball joints on the end. As you can see, there's only uh, one hole they can go into. And then I've made up um, one of the rockers here. What you need to do is put a ball joint on each end. Um, and it says here, note direction. So as you can see there, I've got the other one here. It, you can see there you need this plastic spacer um, in between the ball joint and the rocker itself on the top um, ball joint. So just get your metal bearings, so bearings or bushings I would call them. They are quite a tight fit. Make sure they're square as you push them in. There's a nice clicking sound, always good to hear. So it says, yeah, align these like so. Get these rockers, and fit them over the posts. Like so, nice snug fit. Then we need the uh, Eclipse, which are BA29s. Get those in place. Here we go, clipped into place. Then we've got this part, which is K14, with the two little J5s, with the little tiny grub screws in, in place. I think that is for an anti-sway bar, an anti-roll bar that, that we haven't got, so you can hop up with that later if you need. Just secure those two little pieces with the 3 by 6 screws. Uh, then we place this on the top of those rocker nuts and they're secured by two 6mm screws. Okay, so when you're finished, it should look something like this. So on to step seven, which is the steering linkage. First thing I've done is to make up this tie rod. Um, basically, you get your two ball ends and screw that onto the BA17, which is um, the 32mm bar. So that's a turnbuckle. Um, just match it up with the diagram, and that's the right length. The next thing I've done is get this piece, which is K6, line it up with the diagram. You can see that it's got these uh, kind of ribs on the top. Hope you can see that there. So that shows it's the top. Put the ball end in there. And then what we need to do is get the BA26 bushings again and just push those in. One in the top and one in the bottom. So that's like so. And then you need this part which is K5. Again, put the bushings into that. Again, copy the alignments of the diagram. Then we've got these BA27s, which is a flange tube, these two things here. And this part, which is K16, I've already put the two ball joints into that one. So it's just a matter of that's going to go 
through into unscrew into the plastic layer and the same with the other side put the flange tube in 3 by 8 screw and that's going to screw into that hole in K5 ok so when it's finished it should look something like this so step 8 is attaching the front suspension mount it's also hitting the steering post which are BA30 which I've done here you can see the two metal posts they go into these two holes in the chassis and you've got these countersunk screws that hold it in place from underneath oh yeah um, I did put some thread lock on these screws guys uh, like it says um, the smaller ones don't need that which are the 3 by 8 mil screws just check that on there yep that's the right one and they're going to hold this part which is N4 uh, it says 1XD on it it does actually say that printed on and that just goes on there holding in place with the two countersunk screws so when it's finished it should look something like this and that's a nice easy step so on to step 9 now we're going to be attaching that steering linkage that we've already made if we get that pre-assembled part um, the one with the angle on it goes onto the left I think that goes over there one on each post it's uh, nice and smooth and quite tight there's no slop in that at all and then we need to put on those tie rods we made and what I will do is copy the diagram and it shows that the actual adjuster for the tie rod is pointing to the left on both of them so I shall do the same goes on there and the other one on there okay so on top of this goes um, the damper stay that we've done I think it goes in this orientation and it looks like we're going to have to put a screw into that hole, that hole, that hole and that hole so if we just put that on top it's going to cover up all of this linkage and then we secure that with two 3x12mm screws countersunk and two 3x10s in the outside ok so there it is in place that's uh, very securely attached uh, it's not budging at all it's very rigid so that's a good sign okay so that's step 9 on step 10 and 11 which is preparing and attaching the, the front lower arms you just need to align up these parts these are both D1s um, and as you can see there on the diagram it shows that there's two sets of holes on each side and it's the ones that are nearer to the pivot that you want at the back and you put your ball joint in the outer of those two holes you can see that same with this one but opposite obviously um, and then we've got to do a bit of drilling here as it shows you've got to widen this point here which is there and there these holes so what we need to do is get a drill with a 3mm bit in it and just drill halfway through which is a bit tricky I must say but let's have a go Let's go very gently at that, take out a little bit of material and then we need to get the grub screw which is 10mm long by 3 and there it is and we screw it in from the top and it needs to stick out the bottom 2mm or roughly um, this is for some adjustment I think on the rebound it says somewhere further on in the manual but uh, we shall see when we get there so yeah, you screw it in and if you can see on the camera there we have a couple of millimetres sticking out so all we need now is to get the two shafts 46mm put them through and we've got these plastic spacers J11 go at the back and J14 at the front and let's just hope these don't fall off as I transfer it to the chassis 
So step 11, we're just going to fit these now to the chassis using the N4 part again, um, which is a, a 1XD. Note the rotation of this, obviously you need the, the uh, blank part at the front. Then we've got two countersunk 8mm screws, 3B8s. So let's have a go. So the back's fitting that N4 that we fitted earlier. Notice the ball joints are pointing backwards. And we fit the shafts into the holes in your 1XD part. And then use the two catsink screws from underneath to hold that part N4. Okay, they're done in. So that's the uh, low suspension arms mounted. Okay, so step 12. Uh, yeah, we're making some progress now. Um, this is starting to come together, so we're going to attach the gear case. Um, so that's the bit we've already made. Um, we're going to fit that on now, but we need to put this part B7 on the front. I think it holds the front bumper. And then we've got, whoa, we've got three BA7 12mm screws and we've got six BA8 10mm screws. Make sure we put those in the right place. Yeah, the long ones go at the front through the bumper. So we just put that on there, it does line up, it's kind of uh, fits into place and then I don't know if you can see on the camera there but we've got these two holes, we've got four holes at the bottom there that we're going to screw from underneath. Um, all that now starts to line up. And as I put that in place I can really feel this thing coming together. It's uh, there's some quality showing through here. It really does look well put together and all fits together really nicely. So I'll just get those screws in now. Okay, so that's the last of the screws done up. As I said, it uh, really starting to come together now. Um, starts into uh, feel like a pretty good kit. I must admit, um, I like the design. And the way it's all going together. So yeah, it's, so it's those three screws there, these four here that hold the bottom of the diff case, and then it's just these two hidden away under here that connect to this um, top brace, which makes it all a lot more rigid. So that's end of part 12. So on to step 13, we have to open parts bag B which you've got here. But don't worry, but um, this is what's left from parts bag A. I hope I haven't missed anything out, otherwise we get lots of spares. Anyway, we'll keep hold of those just in case. And let's get on with uh, the front axles. Okay, so I've cheated a little bit. There's the first one done, which is um, the left one. And obviously follow the orientation of the picture again. And we need to put the ball joint on the end hole of that part C1. Uh, C1 is the same on both sides but make sure these uprights are F1 and F2 they are different so for um, the right hand side we're going to need F1 which I've got here and a little trick for putting this together we have to put these um, flange tubes in place there's a BB6 and a BA16 now the BB6 is the slightly taller one that goes at the bottom and the shorter one at the top and we need that space of J15 so I found it difficult to get part J15 in um, with it all loose so what I did was put BB6 in the bottom first and put your 27, your BA27 in the top like that hopefully it won't come out it's uh, quite tight get C1 put that in place and let's get the bottom 10mm counter some screw in to hold C1 in place. You'll find when you've done that up there is a little bit of play in that you can't do the screw all the way up because um, there's a blank in the plastic the hole doesn't go all the way through. Anyway now we should be able to get that J15 into that little gap just about in there now and then we get the top ball joint which has got um, no hex on it. This is your BB2 that goes in the top, and hopefully 
we can get it in there with J15 in the middle. Let's do that one up. Okay, the other strange thing we have to do is we have to drill a two and a half mil hole through the bottom here. You can see that there, there's already a blank for it. I don't know why they haven't done this. And this is what makes me pretty sure this is the same as the XV01 uh, because I definitely remember having to do this on the XV01 as well. So try not to drill all the way through. You only need to drill through the one side. You can just feel when that goes. Then we get the tiny little grub screw. It doesn't say to put this in place on this step, it's on the next one, but I find it can just get it in place. It'll be ready for later. Obviously don't screw it all the way in. We need to put the uh, suspension pivot in there first. And to finish this step off, we just need to put the drive shaft in. So if you just turn that out of the way, your drive shaft with the bearing on, which is your 1050 and push it through and that's the two front axles finished so moving on to step 14 which is attaching the axles <coughs> to um, the actual chassis and the first thing I've done is make up the two top suspension arms which are turnbuckles again you need the ball joints onto this BB3 28mm bar again just match it up with the diagram you need two of those and what we're going to do now is use the shaft, which is this one, with a flat in it. You might be able to see the flat if I rotate it. Uh, that grub screw in the bottom suspension arm is going to hold onto that flat. So we just get the suspension arm, put the flat point into the bottom. Just make sure you get the right one so the uh, steering arm points backwards and we just put that into place and push the bar in like so there's about equal amount sticking out each end and then we can just nip up that grub screw and that will stop the lower pivot coming out ok so when you've done that what we need to do is put the, the top arm on but before we do that you've got this uh, neoprene bushing so that's how thick it is you need to cut you get two, you need to cut one in half and put half of it into the output drive. Then we can get our drive shaft, pop that in, and then locate that in the drive cup in the upright. So once the drive shaft's in, we can get the top arm and clip that into place. like so and then put the other side on exactly the same but obviously with the two cut bushings okay so uh, that's the end of step 14 we're going to bring it to a close here I think I've gone on long enough so we've got the front suspension um, all done and the drive shafts are in so um, hopefully you'll join me on the next one where we'll be getting on with the rest of the build Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye.